Welcome to Riot TV. We're so glad you've joined us again today to be on our program. I'm Pastor Kim Bankston, and this is my daughter, Megan Shepard. Good morning. Thank you for coming again on this beautiful Monday morning. We are just been so blessed to be connecting with everybody and um, growing in agreement with us for Revival, and we're excited for today's show. Today's show is going to be a really great show. We're very happy to have on set with us Pastor Don Cox. And Don, it's really a pleasure and a joy to have you on TV with us today. Thank you very much. It's, a, it's an honor. I'm honored to be here. You know, Riot TV, we're using an acronym, R-I-O-T, and it means Revival in Our Time. And that's what we're believing for here at Riot TV. We're, we're believing to speak things in people's lives that will uh, begin to resurface, uh, bring back some dreams and visions and goals in our life that God has placed there for them to begin to move forward in revival. We are praying and asking God to give us revival in America. And so yes. we're going to be speaking to those things today. And the, um, the scripture that we stand on here at Right TV is Acts 2.17. For God says in the last days he will pour out his spirit upon all flesh, Amen. upon his sons and his daughters, his right. young men and old men. They'll have dreams and visions. A lot of stuff is going on in the heavenly realm, and I believe we're in that time. That's right. And so we just are trying to encourage people uh, to realize that, that God's already released it on the day of Pentecost. That's he right. released mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit. He never took it back. He never That's took right. the Holy Spirit back. <laughs> right. He's still with us. And we believe we just need to encourage people to step into that and do what God is calling them to do. Yes. Megan, I know that you enjoy uh, the scripture that you stand on. And, uh, and uh, that's uh, Esther 4.14. Yes, Esther 4.14. That who knows that you've been called to your royal position for such a time of, as this. And I am just um, believing that not only for myself personally, but for the church corporately and for America that, you know, if we were to take that personally, that we are all here on purpose for a purpose and that God birthed us with a destiny, a call. And if we intentionally walk out those steps daily and remember that we have something to accomplish here, that sure. revival will be birthed. Very good, yes. And so, Don, so as you've come on our set today and be with us, you know, we just wanted to bring you into that idea and that, that mindset that uh, people are important, that yes. uh, right. God has a destiny and a plan for each and every one of them. Everybody. And particularly in the fact of the younger generation. You right. know, you have a huge ministry. You are a yeah. pastor uh, up in the Sacramento area. Yes. So you pastor a congregation. Uh, you're married and uh, have how many children? Four. Four boys. Four Three are in boys. college. Uh, our youngest just turned 14 a couple days ago, so we have four sons. Yeah, and your, your wife, uh, G Giovanna? Giovanna is her name. She is, <laughs> she's amazing, and uh, you know, she's, she's the one that kind of makes everything go. Now, how yeah. long have you guys been married? We'll be 24 years this wow. September. So, yeah, it's been great. That's awesome. So as we're talking about uh, bringing all the generations together, you know, we've talked in the past shows on Riot TV about our God being a generational God. Mm -hmm. That's right. You know, uh, He identifies yeah. Himself. From the beginning, See, as the God, of, the God of Abraham, Isaac, yes. and Jacob. And so we see this connection of the generations. And so uh, that's an emphasis that we have. And, and God is actually having you doing all of it. He has, you are ministering to the old and the young. Yes. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about what God has you doing. Well, doing pastoring is, is an amazing honor to be able to do that. To speak into lives on a weekly basis is an amazing honor that, that I don't take lightly. I, mm -hmm. I take it very seriously, although my personality is kind of crazy and I like <laughs> to do the crazy things. Um, but the, speaking into, into adults is, is an honor. But to me, uh, speaking into the next gen, that's a new word that gets thrown out so much. Mm. Next gen. Mm -hmm. We're talking about the next generation. And, uh, and just for me, youth ministry is harder now than it's ever been. Mm -hmm. uh, there, it, there's never been a harder time for youth ministry, in, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Uh, just because of the times. Uh, you're talking about revival in our time. Yes. And our, our time needs revival. Yeah. Uh, really, needs revival. Um, you see so many, so many young people struggling with so many things, and uh, and in this time that we live in, it's like in the church and young mi youth ministries. Let's say, uh, kids aren't aren't really interested in hearing the message so many times. Mm -hmm. They're they're more interested in how many marshmallows they can fit in their mouth right. at one time. <laughs> right, right. right. We're, we're trying to get them to say the name of Jesus as much as possible, yeah. and they're trying to say Chubby Bunny every Wednesday. <laughs> right, you know. And so so it's it's harder now than at any time, and and. Uh, we need a revival in our time. Yeah. Yes. Well, let me stop you right there for a minute because you, you have a lot, um, of course, uh, obviously, to say today. And, and we want you to be able to communicate to our audience and tell them uh, steps that you're taking, your church is taking, your, your uh, even enlarged ministry is taking. You not only pastor a church, but you're also uh, the uh, leader 
of the Pentecostal Church of God, Northern California and Nevada District as the youth, as the, the, the youth, minister yeah. of the youth director. And I so that's it. a huge calling. Awesome. And it's a very important calling because that is uh, transferable. What uh, what we are trying to do in my generation and even your generation, Absolutely. Donnie, uh, I don't, uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about that today, is that we, we need to not only walk in faith, but we need to find a way, Megan, to, um, to hand that faith down. Yes. You know, uh, I think it's so important as we're talking about bringing up the youth. I think we talked about this a little bit on a previous episode, but to grab them while they're young. You know, as the world is pushing its agenda and it's pushing its culture right up in our face and right up on us, and they want the church backed up into a corner because sure. they want to grab them when they're young because of the influence that they can have. When we need to be the ones who know that every gifting, every calling that our children have as young comes from the Lord. Sure. And so if we start calling those things out for the Lord, calling them out when they're young, bringing them to the house of the Lord, putting them in ministry, giving them a voice, an active voice, you know, then we can start to win that generation young and hopefully keep them as they step up. You know, and then that that in itself, if we keep start them young and keep them and grow with right. them, that will even spring revival. You know, uh, Pastor Don, um, there's so many components to raising up a healthy mm -hmm. young adult into a place of where they're walking in a right. very de dedicated and committed place of faith. Uh, you've done well with your boys. You have four boys four and they're boys. all serving with you in yeah. ministry. Yeah, exactly. uh, how did you do that? You know, we've involved them from a very young age. Mm -hmm. um, we have three boys who are are into music and so they're they'll be on the worship team for years from the time they were small they've been on a worship team uh, we have one son he's our, our third oldest who does not want to be on the stage yeah <laughs> just doesn't want to be up there but you know what he runs our sound and he runs our media awesome. and so he's involved and so that's and it's not just my own kids uh, in any young person that comes to our youth camps or any young person that comes to our youth our church or youth service or outreach they're my kid mm -hmm. you know I might have four blood sons mm -hmm. but I got hundreds and kids all over the place yeah. that they're mine now mm -hmm. you know and I I just I got to give them opportunity I, I got to give awesome. them an opportunity to to grow and, and be the leader you know Ephesians 2 10 every single one of us before we were even born yes. God had a great plan and call for every single one of us that were to walk in it yeah and they have a plan and uh, and just like Megan said they're they're being pulled in every direction, yes. mm -hmm. every direction, yes. and uh, and it's our job. You know, you talk so much about the times that there is such a people talk about the falling away a lot, mm -hmm. and people talk about the decline in the church. Mm -hmm. um, as in youth ministry, I look at myself first. I, I mm -hmm. do that with everything. It's like always my fault. I, I'm just <laughs> that way. I, I, but I look at youth ministry mm -hmm. because according to stats, if 85% of the people who come to know Jesus do so before the age of 18, right? Yeah. Right. I got to do a better job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if the, if the church is declining as a whole, and I'm not doing my job right. I got to look at myself. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, 85 percent will come to know the Lord uh, before the age of 18. Yeah. If youth ministries aren't doing our job, and if churches and pastors like yourself, which I know you and you guys support youth ministry yes. so much, but I got to be honest, there's a lot of churches out there that don't. Mm -hmm. So then, um, you know, when we we're talking about transferring faith to our children, and you guys, of course, have had the uh, the, the privilege and 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 the and the uh, venue to be able to bring your kids into ministry with you so you have a platform for right. them and you also do that with the youth that you're ministering to around uh, California and, and Nevada and giving them opportunities to involve. I think that we hit on a key point as we're talking about revival in our time and starting a riot in a good way. In a good way. <laughs> pushing into the atmosphere and pushing into our culture uh, the thought that we can overcome this, you know, it, it, with the gravity of the times, the way that they are, and with all of the things that we are up against, and all of the the, the devices and things that are trying to distract our young people away from God. Mm -hmm. God is true, and God's word is true, and God says He is greater. Yes. Yes. And we you know there's a verse, there's a chapter in the Bible in Luke chapter 10. And for those of you that are watching by television today, I would just encourage you to get your Bibles and open them up and look at uh, Luke chapter 10. We'll be citing some ideas there, concepts and principles that the Lord Himself laid down. Mm -hmm. The Lord laid, laid down some concepts and principles that worked then and they work now. Yeah, absolutely. But one of the key things that you said was involvement, and the Lord trained up His disciples for two years, yeah. 
mm -hmm. preparing them for usefulness. And as Christians, you might be watching home and thinking, well, I'm not a pastor, I'm not a TV talk show host, I don't do those things that I can have influence. I want to encourage you to know that God has created you for influence. Yes. He's created you for relationship, He's created you to connect, and it does start in our home with our children, which I commend you and your wife very much for the success awesome. of raising four fine boys that love God. Yes. Uh, that's the ultimate achievement, and that's what enables us to perpetuate faith. We're one generation away from losing faith in America. Mm -hmm. Our emphasis here at Right TV is to not let that happen. Yes. To encourage people that are watching us to push on their faith and know that you can have impact no matter what you are doing. Right. If you'll realize that you have been called for a purpose for such a time as this, as Megan That's said, right. and grab a hold of what God is telling you to do and do it with all of your might for the Lord. Right. And so in a microscopic type of way, what you are saying about involvement is so true in our home life mm -hmm. that sure. if we will get our children involved right. in praying, yes, yes, those daily de de devotions around reading the table, the Bible every day. reading yeah. your Bible, yeah. and getting them connected to God, that will begin to bring influence and impact in their lives. Yeah, that right, Megan? Oh yeah, and just setting an atmosphere. You know, it's so funny because the world is gets them so much. You know, you send them to school, and there's all these right. influences. Like I said, they're getting pulled in so many directions, but what the world can't take from them ever is an experience with God. Amen. So if right. you create an atmosphere of worship and, you know, in the car on the way to school, you're praying over them, they're listening to worship music. When you yeah. pick them up, you've got worship music going. Yeah. You create an atmosphere. You bring them to the house of the yeah. Lord where they can experience the Lord for themselves. They watch mom and dad sure. and it starts there, but they have to have that experience for themselves. And that's something that the world can't yeah. take from them. That's and right. that once they have that experience, they know the difference. Uh, it, it's like the coolest thing in the world to yeah. walk into your living room and there's your 21-year-old son reading the Bible. Yes. Yeah. I just, awesome. I love it. That's mm -hmm. it's, real. It's, it's very, very, very cool. And we got to get them involved. Yes. We do. We got to get them involved. Even, like you mentioned the home, even saying the prayer over dinner. Yes. Yeah. Hey, who's going to pray tonight? Mm -hmm. You know, where you got two or three of them say, oh, I will. Yes. Right. Hey, that's a great problem to have. <laughs> that's a good right. starting place. It's good starting place. And, right and you there. can't start too young. As soon as they learn to talk, you know, uh, uh, I get the opportunity and privilege to be around uh, some of my grandchildren almost on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. And when I say that, who wants to pray? There's almost a fight for, I want to pray. No, I want to pray. And yeah. that, we've got a young one is just now turning three years old, but she loves to pray. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's and so, so, so for you at home, we just, this is something we want you to know that involvement is key Thank and crucial crucial to uh, the success of yeah. perpetuating faith and moving into a revival. You know that scripture that I talked about, about Jesus training up his disciples. He's getting them right now, and then he sends them out two by two. Yeah. And I read that, it says he told them to go out, preach the, co the gospel of the kingdom, you know, declare yeah. the kingdom of God, prepare my coming into that city, and then do some really neat things, miraculous things by laying hands yeah. on the sick, Healing. and they will recover. Yeah. And he impacted their lives with authority, with kingdom authority, That's to right. go out in his name he and did. do those things. Those things never left. Mm -hmm. And those are still available to the body of Christ. But I, from that, I took the, the thought of what the Lord did. He sent them out to impact the culture right. of the day. Yes. That's right. And so that is a great mission Making for us. And my question is for you, Donnie, for you to address us today. And, mm -hmm. and what are you doing or what are you emphasizing? What are you saying to that respect? And how can we have positive impact into our culture right. today? I, I, relations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, you mentioned something that there are people at home saying that oh, I don't have a TV show or mm -hmm. I don't have a microphone on a, or a pulpit. Um, he sent them out two by two and there were healings and there were all these great things, but there's something mentioned there. Food. Mm -hmm. Yes. If you read it, yes. Yes. there's food. Yes. Mm -hmm. And some of the things that we do for outreach is I love, we bring events to the amusement parks. Uh -huh. And awesome. there'll be kids there. And we always give our young people, and especially young bands, a chance to play. Who says they can play at Six Flags? Right. Right. So we give them a chance to play at Six Flags. There are 20,000 people there. Wow. I don't know them. I, know, I don't know their background. Mm -hmm. 
but there's roller coasters. Yeah. Right. We got that in common. Yeah. You know, uh, I love be, being a, a chaplain. I love being able to talk to the players and different things for the sports teams. Can you stop but, there for a minute? I'm sorry to interrupt you, but can you tell our viewing audience uh, what oh, you do as a chaplain? Yeah, it's an honor. I, I, I'm the chaplain for the Stockton Heat, uh, AAA for the uh, Calgary Flames hockey. Awesome. Uh, and then I'm one of the chaplains with a great guy, Terry Douglas, who, who works with Donnie Moore, who's a fantastic man awesome. um, with the uh, Sacramento River Cats which awesome. is AAA for the San Francisco Giants That's great. Cool. and uh, we do we do uh, Bible studies with them and we'll speak to them pray with them but one thing we do with both those teams is we'll do faith nights also help with the Sacramento Kings okay. um, awesome. and we'll do faith nights and, and it's the same kind of principle that there'll be 14,000 people mm -hmm. and I don't know everybody uh, there'll be I, I think there's 16,000 people for the Kings and 14,000 wow. people that could come to a, a, a River Cats game and eight nine thousand that can come to a hockey game I don't know all of them I don't know their backgrounds but for that day we had something that we could relate yeah. on yeah. we can it, we can talk about it we yeah. connected we can communicate yeah. talk about hockey or, or baseball or or whatever and, and then there are people at home saying well i don't know anything about hockey i don't know anything about baseball right. I, I i might not even like a roller coaster <laughs> i know there's a few out there that don't like roller coasters right. but you all eat right we all eat <laughs> yes and so when jesus sent them out two by two he might have been sending them to places that their backgrounds might have been different. Mm -hmm. Their upbringings would have been different. Yes. What they talked about yeah. on a daily basis might have been different. But they all ate. Yep. And it's, it's some place we, we can communicate. We mm -hmm. can talk about. So no matter where we go and anybody at home, anywhere we go, we're all eating. Mm -hmm. We find those things that we can connect with. We find those things that we have in, in common. Mm -hmm. and, and we can share the name of Jesus mm -hmm. through those names. That is so things. that that is so good, and um, and I hope you've got inspired by that thought. You know, is that really what it is? Is connecting with people. Yeah. That's right. You know, there's many different venues and ways that uh, we connect with people, and uh, God has certainly opened up some wonderful and powerful venues for you, Donnie. And we yes. uh, are so awesome. thankful that God is giving you those uh, those areas of, of great great influence. But every one of you out there today have influence. You have a personal influence. And the mandate is the same. God wants to use your life to promote and, uh, and to ex extend the idea that God is real, God loves people, and yes. God loves Amen. you. Uh, the, you know, it's never changed. The great commandment is to love God with everything you've got yes. Yes. and love people. And we have to keep that in focus and, yeah, and be intentional. The one thing that we talk a lot about around here at Right TV is to be intentional because mm -hmm. it's easy in a setting, whether at church, Six Flags, here at Riot right. TV, to be very specific and intentional about what we're doing because we know right. this is what we are doing. Right. Right. But as we do our day to day, it's very easy on the other hand Absolutely to right. forget about yes. what we're being intentional about. Megan, I want you to talk about that for a minute. Yeah, you know, uh, I talked about that. I've talked about it several times because it's just so key because like I say, our days get filled up so fast and you're running here and you're running there and you're picking up this there and then you're grocery shopping. But if you just let yourself go through the busyness, you miss out on so many God appointments, right. God opportunities, right. just to opportunities. Mm -hmm. a little bit of kindness here, a smile there, someone who just needs a couple dollars, you know? And so I always talk about being intentional when I start my day. I always exercise, but I pray and I worship and I just say, you know, guide me through this day, Lord, be with me, show me, right. you know, because you have opportunities everywhere. And if you're not careful, right. you miss out on your God given appointments. Amen. Well, I did want to bring uh, to our TV audience the fact that you have recently yeah. released a book. Yes. Isn't that the craziest thing? Yeah. <laughs> and, and the title really captures you. It says The Dirty Stall Philosophy. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about your book? Well, today? It, it's taken from Proverbs 14.4. It says, where there are no oxen, the stalls stay clean. Mm -hmm. But there's much increase by the strength of the ox. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember when I first started in youth, youth ministry, and my very first uh, month or two, I, I tried to have an outreach, tried to do a, an event, and it just was terrible. <laughs> uh, I, I think something got broke in the church property. Uh, it just was bad. And my dad, who's my pastor, was the pastor of that church, pulled me aside, and he told me. He told me that verse. And he said, Don, you got, you got to know. Where there are no oxen, the stalls stay clean. Mm -hmm. So if if you didn't have any youth there, 
you wouldn't have to shovel. Right. right. You wouldn't have to deal with the messes that they cause yes. or the issues that they cause. Yes. Uh, youth ministry can get a little messy and mm -hmm. broken windows and gum and tithing envelopes. And <laughs> I mean, there's, but if you, the churches that don't have those problems, mm -hmm. They also many times don't have that increase that right. the strength of those kids bring to a church. Right. The families that they bring. So good. And so it was just to tell youth pastors and young leaders that it's okay to mess up. Right. It's okay to have a trip that doesn't go right. It's, it's okay to have an event that maybe a window got broken. You're going to have things like that, but don't quit. Right. So this don't book, give up. This book, The Dirty Stall Philosophy, is directed mainly for uh, ministries or youth ministers. Or how could somebody at home that's watching on TV today and, and they're not in the youth ministry, what would you say to them that they could take this book and pull out concepts and principles that would right. help them in their home? Well, there's a lot of leadership. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's for successful youth leadership. Mm -hmm. uh, whether you're a parent, yeah. things you can use. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times in youth leadership, we overlook kids ministries. Mm -hmm. And so I want to make sure that, that kids ministers at home know that, you know, I, I don't know everything about youth ministry. I don't pretend to. Mm -hmm. But 23 years, I've made enough mistakes to get enough experience to know yes. what works, yes. maybe what doesn't work. Yes. But this isn't a book about do this game or right. have this challenge, mm -hmm. or this is your lesson plan. Yeah. It, it's more about developing the leader. Why we do these things, mm -hmm. you know? Like for example, we talk about youth ministry and what's so important about youth ministry. And a lot of people think that the value of our call is our calling mm -hmm. or our title or right. our office. Really, the value of our call is the sheep. Yep. That's right. That's our, uh, those yep. kids are the yes. value of our call. We're yes. called to do something with them and it's to be amazing. I don't yes. believe anybody's put here to be, you know, ordinary. Right. You know, God yeah. has a great purpose for okay, us. Okay, so how can we get a hold of your book and how can we get... It, it just you. came out. Uh, <laughs> I, I just saw it for the first time a few days ago. Yeah. Uh, it's on Amazon.com. Uh, just look up my name, yeah. Don Cox, or The Dirty Stall Philosophy. It comes up. Mm -hmm. um, I get to set that cost. And it's two ninety nine uh, for awesome. for the ebook. Yes, um, good. I have a friend of mine, a good friend of mine. And he says, "Don, you you got a great heart, and I love you, but you're a terrible businessman." <laughs> and I said, well, "Why is that?" And he said, "Because you wrote a book for for youth pastors, and youth pastors are known for not having hardly any money, <laughs> and they don't like to read. <laughs> so you wrote a book." And I said, "You know what I did?" And so it's two ninety nine. Uh, I just got That's the hard scary. copies, and they, yeah. they can call me or go through yeah. go through Riot TV. Well, thank you. Huh. Yes. Okay. So um, if you'd like to get a copy of this book, The Dirty Stall Philosophy, uh, you can go to Amazon.com, download it. It's available now for two dollars and ninety nine cents, awesome. or you can write to Riot TV. The number. Uh, the uh, address is on the screen, and so copy down that address. Just write us and let us know. We want to get Don Cox's book, The Dirty Stall Philosophy, and we'll make sure that th that gets to you. Uh, right TV is not taking any profit out of this book. This mm -hmm. all goes for his ministry and for the youth of our land, for the potential and possibility that uh, young people are going to be impacted by the grace yes. and power of God to raise up a generation, that young generation, that's going to move this nation into a revival. Yes. And so thank you for being a part of our uh, program to today, here. Don. Uh, time has gone way too fast. Oh, we it's hope, amazing. We <laughs> hope to have you again sometime. Yes. Bring you back on and, and we'll revisit the, what's going on with the youth of the land. Pray with us. Believe with us for Absolutely. what we're trying to accomplish and bring revival. And to our home uh, viewing audience, we want to say to you, thank you again for uh, being on our television program. Uh, Megan, any last things you'd like to say? Uh, thank you so much for joining with us again. Um, connect with us. We want to hear your comments. We want to hear testimonies. You can write us. You can call us. We have a Facebook, riotministry.com. Um, just connect with us. We love to hear what God's doing in your life. So it encourages us. Well, we're going to finish our show again uh, this week with a young lady by the name of Katie Overholzer. Yes. Got wonderful, fantastic response last time she was on the program. And so she's going to be coming in just a minute to finish out our program with a great song. We want that song to minister to you. Just worship together with us. It's very important that what we do here at Right TV impacts your life to do something great for God. Yes. The theme that we have here in every close is what we truly believe. And that is you can believe God for big things. Yes. That's right. Together, we can start a riot. Let's have a revival in our time. We'll see you next time. Okay.